All right, so today we're uh, we're ditching the hiking boots, right? Yeah. Getting comfy, because this deep dive, well, it's going to take us to the edge of the world. Almost. <clears throat> oh, so. Standing atop those legendary cliffs of Moher in Ireland, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've seen the pictures of those dramatic, like, cliffside photos. Yeah. But trust me, there's more to these cliffs than just a pretty background. Yeah. You send over a ton of articles and guides on the cliffs of Moher. So let's uh, let's unearth some of that history, those legends, right? The stuff the tourist brochures, they leave out. Yeah. What's so fascinating about them, about the cliffs of Moher, is how they kind of, they draw you in with that sheer scale. We're talking like eight kilometers of coastline, cliffs going up like 214 meters. Wow. But then you start to, you know, peel back the layers and you realize this is an ancient, ancient place. Uh, so not just like... A geological marvel, you're saying. Right. We're talking serious history here. Yeah. I mean, there's evidence of people being there like over 6,000 years ago. 6,000. 6,000, yeah. Wow. So to put it in perspective, that's, you know, older than the pyramids. Right. And it's not just speculation. Like nearby, there's ring forts, you know, remnants of where people actually lived and burial mounds. They all tell a story. That's incredible to think of all the people who stood on those cliffs looking out at the same, like, wild Atlantic, you know. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of stories, our research mentioned some pretty interesting stuff about the cliffs of Moher and, like, Irish folklore. What's the deal with that? Well, I mean, you know, when you have these dramatic landscapes, you tend to have dramatic stories to go along with them. And Irish folklore, it's full of these tales of, like, witches and fairies and giants and all sorts of mythical creatures, you know. Right. And the cliffs of Moher, they have this windswept beauty, this sense of mystery. It's no surprise that they inspired their fair share of legends. Okay, but you can't just say witches and fairies and then move on. Like, no. give me some details. What kind of legends are we talking about? Well, let's just say that local lore says that the cliffs, they were once a gathering place for some pretty powerful beings. Oh. And some people say that on stormy nights, if you listen closely, you can still hear the echoes of their laughter carried on the wind. Okay, now that's the good stuff. Mm -hmm. This is why we do these deep dives, <laughs> you know. Uncovering the, the hidden layers of a place. Right. So we've got ancient history. We've got these captivating legends. But it sounds like the cliffs of Moher are also teeming with life, like even today. One of the articles mentioned a surprising amount of, uh, of wildlife there. Uh, yeah, it's true. It's not just a pretty face, you know. They're a thriving ecosystem. Right. If you're into birds, if you're a bird watcher, you'd love it there. Thousands of seabirds, they nest along those cliffs. Puffins, guillemots, razorbills. It's a symphony of sounds and flapping wings, and it's its incredible. Puffins. Okay, I'm sold. Those little guys are adorable. They're great. What about, like, the water below? Any chance of spotting some, like, marine life from those heights? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You can often see dolphins, you know, leaping through the waves. And if you're really, really lucky, you might even catch a glimpse of a basking shark. Wow. Yeah. It's the second largest fish in the world. Seeing it glide through the water, it's amazing. Wow. Okay, so we've got history, legend, a vibrant ecosystem, and we haven't even gotten to the views yet. Right. But speaking of the views, those iconic cliffs, how did they even form in the first place? Over millions of years. Yeah. The cliffs of Moher are a testament to just the, the power of nature, formed as the Atlantic Ocean just chipped away relentlessly at the coastline, carving out those those sheer cliffs. But here's what's really cool. You can actually see that history recorded in the layers of the rock. Layers of rock, like like chapters in a history book. Exactly. Yeah, they're made up of layers of sandstone and shale, each one representing a different period of Earth's history. And in those layers, you have fossils, you know, yeah. remnants of these ancient sea creatures. And it just paints this picture of a time when Ireland was submerged under this prehistoric ocean. Okay. I am officially wowed by the, like, geological history yeah. embedded in those cliffs. Yeah. It's like stepping back in time, but instead of a time machine, you just need, like, some good hiking boots. Right. Speaking of, you know, our listeners are wondering about the, the best time to actually go and see the cliffs of Moher. Should we book that summer trip or are we embracing the uh, off-season vibes? Well, summer definitely has its appeal. Weather's at its most predictable. When it comes to Ireland, right? Yeah, as predictable as it gets anyway. Long hours of sunlight, the cliffs just bathed in sun. But the trade-off is you are going to be sharing those views. Right. So it's like sunshine and crowds versus like 
maybe a more tranquil experience, but potentially dramatic weather. Yeah, exactly. If you like a bit of solitude, you know, or even just prefer those moody kind of windswept landscapes, spring or autumn, those shoulder seasons are, they're really special. You might have the trails all to yourself and who knows, you might even get lucky and get a rainbow or two arncing over those cliffs. Oh. Okay. So you say unique photo ops. Now you're talking. Speaking of, our research mentioned something about sunrise and sunset being like particularly magical at the cliffs of Mower. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Picture this, the sun rising up over the horizon, painting the cliffs, all these hues of gold and pink, seabirds swirling around, the sound of the waves crashing against the rocks. It's it's pretty special. Okay, now you're just showing off. But seriously, <laughs> it, it sounds incredible. All right, so I'm sold on the shoulder season, trying to time it for either sunrise or sunset. Right. Preferably both, right? Right. But let's get practical for a minute. We're talking about a popular destination like this. Parking must be a nightmare. It can be, yeah, especially in peak season. But there are some some tips to keep in mind. Okay. The key thing is to arrive early, what? especially if you want those sunrise photos. Arrive early, got it. <laughs> Chow my inner early bird. Any other logistical tips our listeners should keep in mind? Yeah, well, remember those unpredictable Irish skies we talked about? Always dress in layers because a light jacket can be your best friend, even on a hmm. on a sunny day. And waterproof gear, essential. No matter what the forecast says. Yeah, good advice. Nothing ruins a good hike like being caught in a downpour completely unprepared. Exactly. And the second thing is, you know, remember those incredible layers of rock and fossils we talked about? Yeah. They've been preserved for millions of years. We got to keep them safe. Right, of course. As tempting as it might be to venture off the path for that perfect Instagram photo, you got to stick to the designated trails. Protect yourself and protect the cliffs. Safety and respect for nature, always always a good policy. So we've covered the best time to visit, how to deal with the parking situation, the importance of like respecting the environment. Right. What else should our listeners know before we, we move on from the cliffs themselves? Well, the cliffs are undeniably the stars of the show, but the surrounding area, it's full of hidden gems. Ooh, I love a good hidden gem. What treasures await beyond the cliffs? Mm -hmm. All right, oh. spill beans. What hidden gems are we talking about here? Well, you can't talk about the cliffs of Moher without mentioning Doolin Village. Doolin Village, right. That's like the heart of traditional Irish music. Exactly. E Imagine like stepping into this cozy pub, the air's thick with peat smoke and the sound of fiddles and like bodrons just filling every corner. It's not even just about the music itself, you know. It's the atmosphere. It's the community, this feeling that the music is like flowing from the soul of the village. Okay, you're painting quite the picture here. I can almost hear the music uh. and feel that fireplace warmth. But say our listener wants to like dive even deeper into that Irish culture. Okay. You know, experience something really unique. Where do we go? We set sail for the Aran Islands. Wow. Specifically, Innismore, the largest of the three. The Aran Islands. See, I always picture those as like this remote almost mythical place. Yeah, they do have this like mystique about them. Perched on the edge of the Atlantic, it really is like stepping back in time. Stark beauty, ancient stone forts just clinging to these cliffs. This way of life that's it's remarkably resilient. They still speak Gaelic there, you know? Mm -hmm. And they've held on to their heritage from those traditional fishing methods to like, you know, those Urin sweaters. Yeah. Hand knitted with these these intricate stitches passed down for generations. It's like a truly like immersive cultural experience. Yeah. Okay. So we've got this vibrant music scene in Doolin, the timeless traditions of the Aran Islands. What other like hidden treasures await when you venture beyond the cliffs. Have you ever heard of the Burren? The Burren? It rings a bell? I don't know. Tell me more. So imagine this landscape, unlike anything you've ever seen. This vast expanse of limestone pavement crisscrossed by all these cracks and crevices, like a giant jigsaw puzzle designed by nature. And it might sound stark, but the Burren, it's teeming with life. You'll find these delicate wildflowers blooming in the most unexpected places, their roots clinging to the cracks in the rock. It's it's a testament to the resilience of nature and such a contrast to those dramatic cliffs that are, you know, just a stone's throw away. Wow. It sounds otherworldly. It is. Okay. Adding the burn to my must-see list for sure. For good. Do we have time for like one more hidden gem before we wrap up this epic, epic deep I dive? More. Yeah. Let's go south along the coast to the town of Lahinch. Lahinch. Wait, is that the surfing spot? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
If you're looking for a little little adventure with those iconic cliffs as your backdrop, La Hinch is the place to be, catching a wave, wind in your hair, those majestic cliffs towering above you. It's it's an experience. Yeah, that's an Instagram worthy moment right there. You've officially <laughs> convinced me. A trip to the cliffs of Moher isn't just about the cliffs. No. It's about immersing yourself in the the culture, the history, the natural wonders of the whole region. It's about experiencing the place in all its dimensions, you know? Yeah. From those iconic views to the the hidden gems that most people don't even know about. Well said, well said. So to our listener out there, we've journeyed from ancient legends to secret surf spots and everything in between. We've explored the history embedded in the layers of those cliffs, the vibrant culture of those villages, and just the, the sheer power of nature. But remember, this deep dive, it's just the beginning. Now is your turn to experience the magic of the Cliffs of Mohor for yourself. Until next time, keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep diving.